Good day, Discord. <laughs> Good day, Internet. Hello, Discord, Internet, Twitch, all of you. If you're on the internet and you're listening, good day to you. Yes. Good day. Hello. Hello. Uh, We we were supposed to have John C. Dvorak today, uh, but uh, his internet decided not to show up. (laughs) And so um, we had to reschedule. But we'll bring him back. Don't worry. We'll We'll be covering this in our net neutrality conversation in just a few minutes. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) All right. Uh, Shall we do our show then? I think we shall. All right, here we go. In three, two. This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Kirk Stephenson, Miss Music Teacher, James C. Smith, and Dave Packard. On this episode of DTNS, foldable PCs are trying to become a thing. The FCC wants to swing back to net neutrality. And do we want podcasts in our music apps? Well, too bad. That's what we're getting. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, September 26th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Secret Bunker, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Now, I know some of you may have heard us say at the end of yesterday's show that John C. Dvorak was going to be with us. uh, And he was until his internet decided to leave. And so we will will try to get John back. Uh, Sorry for that, John. We'll, We'll reschedule. In the meantime, though, you know what did show up, Sarah? What's that, Tom? The quick hits. See what you did there. After a ban on iPhone 12s in France due to radiation concerns, Apple has offered regulators in the country an update to mitigate what was considered an excessive specific absorption rate. Earlier this month, Apple pledged to accommodate the testing methods used in France, and the French digital ministry told Reuters that it is reviewing the update. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission and 17 states' attorneys general have filed a joint lawsuit against Amazon via say, alleging it violated antitrust laws, which reduced competition and raised prices. On the seller side, Amazon is accused of punishing sellers who offered lower prices elsewhere than Amazon and pushing sellers to Amazon's fulfillment service and to pay fees for things like advertising on the platform. On the consumer side, the FTC accuses Amazon of replacing search results with paid ads and biasing search results to Amazon's own products. Uh, We have heard this refrain before. In other Amazon news, product head David Limp, who just announced he was leaving Amazon, has been named CEO of Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin rocket company. Hmm. To the moon. The Verge's Sean Hollister reports that Valve announced its shipping Steam at VR 2.0 in beta. In its words, quote, we see this as the first major step towards our goal of bringing all of what's new on the Steam platform into VR. Valve has supposedly been working on a VR headset codenamed Deckard. It's OS update day. Microsoft began rolling out the fall update for the Windows 11 system. That's the one that brings you Copilot, the AI-powered assistant for Windows. Among other features, Microsoft Paint's getting some Photoshop-like features with support for transparency and layers. File Explorer gets its modern makeover, and Windows 11 now supports passkeys. Apple also released its operating system a little earlier than usual, Mac OS Sonoma, just a week after iOS 7. Among the new features there, the Mac lock screen looks like an iPhone's with a password field instead of a number pad. You can put iPhone widgets on a Mac without having to install the corresponding app. And a new game mode prioritizes CPU and GPU resources to optimize gaming and make wireless accessories more responsive. Spotify launched a new feature called Jam, which lets up to 32 users create a combined playlist. Jam has technology that you may have seen in other other multi-person playlists like Blend and Duo Mix, but is designed for real-time collabs, as the kids say, like at a birthday party. Instead of only one person being that DJ, having access to control the music at that social gathering, and everyone says, actually... They have pretty bad taste in music. Everybody, or at least 32 people who are part of the jam, can multi-DJ that event. (laughs) That could get messy. I've been there. Indeed. Well, foldable right. screens. Uh, yes. yes, foldable screens. Tell me. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's let's uh, switch gears, talk about foldable screens, and we're not talking about mobile devices, although this will play into the conversation we're about to have. The LG Gram Fold is a 17-inch foldable OLED laptop that can be used like a tablet. 
Not the first to the party, of course. There's the Lenovo X1 Fold, uh, which just launched its second version, 16-inch, 16-inch uh, version, and two other 17-inch foldables: the Asus ZenBook 17-fold OLED and HP's 17-inch Spectre Fold. Now, as with foldable phones, the form factor uh, will hurt your wallet. It's expensive. ThinkPad X1 Fold is $2,499. ZenBook Fold is $3,499. The Spectre Fold is $5,000. LG's entry is right in there. Now, it's only going to be available in South Korea. So we have the price in won, 4.99 million won. But that puts it just below $4,000 US. LG is using its own LG display foldable screen. Uh, If you are keeping track of displays out there, and I know one of you is, Samsung and BOE also make foldable laptop and tablet displays that are used in some of these. Uh, So, yeah, that's where we are with the foldable displays. And all of these that Tom mentioned offer the ability to dock a Bluetooth keyboard uh, to use like a 12 to 13 inch laptop using the keyboard separately with a full size screen is also an option or using a virtual keyboard when bent into the laptop shape and you can hold it like a book. So you might say, all right, uh, are we out of gimmick land? Obviously, these are expensive, Tom, but. Are there situations throughout your regular day where you say, gosh, I wish I had one? Just like foldable phones, uh, I want to set aside the expense for the sake of being able to have a discussion, because otherwise I think we just end up with too pricey uh, for for most people. Uh, Is there a reason? If Let's say the cost of these comes down as they become more popular, which often happens. uh, Would I want a foldable screen? And I was very fascinated with foldable phones. And once I got one, I got the Pixel Fold, I started to realize like, okay, this is what it's good for. It's really nice to be able to open it up to that bigger screen sometime, but not have to have it that way. I don't know that I've ever felt the same way about a laptop though. I'm not sure that I... I, and and my Chromebook, I have a Chromebook that I can fold over into a tablet. I used to have the Surface where you could detach the screen and use it as a tablet. I never do either of those things. So... I'm not sure I need a laptop that unfolds into a tablet, at which point it seems inconvenient, don't you think, to just have to like, oh, I have to snap a Bluetooth keyboard on or or pair it up or use it separately. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, the price is a factor here. But putting that aside, yeah, is this a form factor that I say, ah, this would this would help me in, you know, A, B and C scenarios? And Mm -hmm. I can't really come up with any scenario. Now, I'm also not a multi-monitor person. Right now, I'm sitting, you know, I've got my big desktop uh, monitor. It's, uh, I don't even think it's that, 28 inches, I think. Plenty big, you know. I got windows. I can see all sorts of, you know, things at once. But it kind of just makes sense to me to have it all in one place. Now, that's a desktop situation. I'm not traveling with this rig at all. Uh, But if I were to have a laptop, uh, the, you know, even... When I used an iPad uh, quite often, which is the only tablet that I've ever used with any consistency, and I I haven't used uh, an an iPad regularly for for years now, I was always sort of like, eh, yeah, you can add a uh, keyboard to it, but then, like, what's the point of it being a a tablet, rather? And I, I get that. There are a lot of people who go, uh, it's great. It's great for that reason. You know, if you have space issues, if you're doing a lot of travel, you know, if you like the touchscreen capability, all of that makes a lot of sense to me. But the foldable laptop, uh, I, I guess I have to go back to price. At this point, no. I, the, it, it just isn't something that I, it, it's not something I would say no to, right? If someone said, hey, try this out. But uh, no, it's not a form factor that I need. It's cool. That's about how I feel maybe, about it. Maybe on the go. May, and I'm, I'm not on the go very often, so that's probably why I'm not thinking about it. But what yeah. what about, so let's pretend we're not ourselves for a second, uh, <laughs> where we never leave our house or garage. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and and if you're on the go, having the flexibility to make make that screen bigger or smaller, like I could see on an airplane, that's usually my go to for for travel is like, oh, could I watch a movie on this? Well, a nice 17 inch screen. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Yeah, I thought I would like watching true. movies on a on a pixel fold, but I don't really watch them more on the unfolded version of the pixel fold, which is seven inches than I would on a like 6.9 inch iPhone. So this, this could actually change that. I don't know if that justifies the price, but that's the best I got. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I think that, you know, when you, when you, when, you know, we're asking ourselves, like, is this just a gimmick because it's possible to make this form factor? No, I think there's yeah, a lot right. more to it. And somebody mm-hmm. out there is going, this is a great use case that you're not thinking of. And please do email us, uh, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com with your thoughts. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think if you are en route, uh, regularly, and, you know, we were talking about, we were having this conversation uh, about foldable phones not that long ago of just being able to pack it in uh, when you're not using it in its full capacity into a, you know, a smaller pocket or, or you know, mm-hmm. duffel bag or whatever. That sometimes is enough to say, yes, this now I can do a variety of things with one product that can mimic three. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to wrap up this this conversation uh, with a plea for feedback. Uh, I'm going to give you two folders. There's the folder that I will not respond to, which is the people going, don't laptops already fold? Uh, And the people going, I hate the foldable idea. I will read them. I will appreciate them, but I won't respond to them. Uh, If you send us the hey, I want the foldable screen in my laptop and here's why. Definitely going to respond to that and might read those on the show. So send those to us. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. I mean, I'll laugh at the ones that say, aren't laptops already foldable? Every time you send it. <laughs> he asked. I just won't respond to it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, U.S. Federal Communications Commission Chair Jessica Rosenworcel is announcing plans Tuesday to propose reclassifying broadband internet providers as telecommunication providers, a.k.a. Title II. Ah, Sarah, it's like greatest hits. Remember this old uh, tune from the 2010s? I do. In uh-huh. fact, yes, a news item we covered extensively back in the day. Mm-hmm. And apparently mm-hmm. we are swinging right back. Well, you know, all the old fashions come back around. Uh, Net neutrality, apparently, one of them. If you're having a hard time keeping track, uh, well, let me bring you back up to speed. Uh, FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler, under President Obama, classified internet providers as telecoms, placing them under open internet guidelines, commonly called net neutrality. It's called Title II. It says you're a common carrier. You can't prejudice certain traffic. You're just delivering the service. A version of that was created. FCC Chair Ajit Pai, who came in under President Trump, rescinded that classification and said, no, no, no. Internet providers are under communications rules, Title I, like cable TV, meaning that open internet guidelines don't apply. They can manage their network however they want in order to make sure that the packets flow freely. We don't want to restrict them from managing. Now, everybody said when Wheeler did it and when Pi did it, that it would ruin the internet. And in neither case did it ruin the internet. But I'll tell you what isn't good is constantly switching what the telecoms and everybody else have to deal with. And now Rosenworcel would like to go back to reclassify them again. This follows the appointment of Anna Gomez to the FCC commission. That makes the commission a full five member body for the first time in years, meaning you can actually have a three, two vote instead of always having a two, two tie. And the initial vote on this proposal is now going to be scheduled for October 19th. Um, Sarah, do you enjoy the ping pong of reclassification of the internet every, you know, five to 10 years? Not at all. I mean, besides it being a news item that then I talk about, uh, no, I, I don't think this is good for anybody. I know that there are a lot of net neutrality advocates. Uh, certainly a lot of folks in our audience uh, feel pretty strongly about that. So I feel like this is a win or at least a, a step in the right direction of a win, but not if it's just going to go back to something else, you know, in, uh, it, depending on uh, the administration in charge uh, going forward. I think what we need to do at this point is say, all right, let's, let's all just, let's classify and, and, and end it. Yeah, Please. we need a new title. That That's my position. And I know that making a new law is almost impossible in this day and age, unless it has to do with very you know limited categories that everybody agrees on. And this is such a political football, you're not going to get people to agree. But the problem is that, for, first of all, the internet is neither of these things. That's why we actually don't see much 
real big effect when they reclassify is that the internet just kind of is like, well, we're, we're not communications or telecommunications, either one, we're the internet. Uh, and so maybe you get a little attitude to push a little one way or another, but to properly manage the internet, you just keep managing it as the internet. If you want to properly regulate it, I think you have to create internet regulation. The telecommunications regulation was created in the 30s when tele telephony was new. And the communications mm -hmm. regulation was created in the 70s when cable television was new. And I, and I think the 90s is when it really got solidified. So you could think about it that way, too. But we're now in the age of the Internet. There needs to be a classification that says the Internet works like this. Here are the rules to say, like, hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. Net neutrality for whatever it means could be part of that. Uh, but I think it really does need to just say, here's here's the guidelines in which you operate an Internet service provider. And they're essentially the way ISPs have been operating and just saying, here are the boundaries. Uh, it shouldn't even be that controversial, in, in my opinion, anyway. I know that uh, telcos have their own thoughts about uh, this because it can benefit companies. But putting all of this aside, because I know you've thought about this a lot, Tom, who, what is the argument for a non-net neutrality future uh, for a uh, broadband internet that makes sense? Yeah. So usually the argument you get uh, from from the ISPs is that if if net neutrality rules go in place, they won't be able to properly manage their networks because there are times when you need to shape traffic in order to keep the internet flowing. Uh, mm -hmm. Turns out when Wheeler's rules were in place. Nobody got sued for proper management of traffic. And the argument for net neutrality is if you don't have rules in place for net neutrality, the ISPs will block traffic uh, in order to prioritize paid traffic. And that means that that certain voices will be disadvantaged. Turns out we haven't seen that either because it really doesn't make as much business sense as people fear. So when I talk to network people, people who work on actual networks at ISPs, and I, I, I know several of them, they all say, look, we, we do need some rules of the road to make sure that everybody's cooperating with each other, maybe some rules to make peering clear and easy and so we don't have to fight each other of it, maybe some poll access rules so everybody can, can run uh, networks easier, but we really don't fit in either of these categories. When you talk to the lobbyists, when you talk to the business people at networks, that's when they start saying, well, we, we need these easier rules in order to do traffic shaping and stuff like that. The, the folks who operate the networks don't say that as much in my experience. Hmm. All right, folks. Uh, I know a lot of you are Android users and we have a show for you. Ron Richards and Huente Dow bring you Android Faithful, a podcast devoted exclusively to Android news and information. You can catch it Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, live right there on the internet. Uh, net neutrality or not, the packets fly to you. Go to <laughs> www.androidfaithful.com. Google has a reputation for killing its own products. Uh, it's kind of a meme at this point. Today certainly does not provide evidence against that. So let's run down what has happened. YouTube Premium Lite will go away as of October 25th. This was the less expensive version of YouTube Premium that just removed ads. A longer-lived offering, Basic HTML Gmail, will go away in January. So Aww. they're giving us a heads up on this. This version has been around for more than 10 years, even though Gmail back in the day was always like, you can use it, but don't you want the nicer, newer one? Uh, I don't know. Some of you might have said, no, I like basic. Uh, so you got till Jan. And Google Podcasts will shut down later in 2024. We don't know exactly when, but sometime next year. The company is once again moving podcast listeners along to a new platform, and this time it's YouTube Music. Yeah, Google added podcast support to YouTube Music app in the U.S. anyway, back in April. Uh, they say a migration tool is in the works so that you'll be able to bring all your Google podcast shows over to YouTube Music. They had a migration tool for Google Music to bring it over to YouTube Music. That worked fairly well, so hopefully this one will too. And it will include RSS feeds for shows not currently in the YouTube Music catalog. So it'll be open for you to add RSS feeds. It won't have to be indexed in YouTube for it to work. You'll also be able to export an OPML of your podcast feeds from Google Podcasts if you don't want to go to YouTube Music, and you can take that OPML into any other podcast app that allows you to import it. TechCrunch points out this leaves Apple 
as the only major platform that has not merged music and podcasts into one app. Uh, though Apple did announce Tuesday that Apple Music radio shows are now going to be available in the Apple Podcasts app. That is different than music and podcasts altogether. Those are essentially shows. They could be considered podcasts. Uh, Sarah, yes. are these platforms worth the effort <laughs> for, po for podcasters or listeners, either one? I mean, listen, so every time I start a new podcast and daily tech news show aside, this is something that I do here and there. Um, in various project, uh, you know, capacities. And I always kind of say to everybody, okay, here are, our, you know, the kind of obvious stuff where the feeds should go. Here's where you're probably going to get your most, uh, you know, the majority of your audience. But here are some other places that people enjoy podcasts. You know, let's try to service as many people as possible. Google Podcasts has consistently, because I get reports, monthly reports from Google, consistently just the lowest numbers, you know, so I kind of go, okay, well, it, I don't think it's a service that doesn't work well. I, I, I've never thought that. In fact, I think it makes a lot of sense. But for whatever reason, people just don't think about that as, you know, a place to get podcasts. Maybe some of you say that's the only way that I get podcasts. And, and you know, that's great. There just clearly aren't enough of you to the point that the company says, let's roll it into music, which brings me to my gripe. Podcasts and music, two different things. If you want to reinvent an app, call it audio, then let's talk. But podcasts and music are two different things. Yes, you can have a podcast about music. So we're getting into a little Venn diagram thing mm -hmm. here. But they're two different things. It's like, I mean, I've always thought that about iTunes. iTunes being about anything besides music has never, you know, it, it never sat well with me. So I, I sound a little bit more fired up about this than I really am. I mean, <laughs> yeah, do no what you want to like do, it. universe. <laughs> but it, it, it bothers me. It does. I, do, I don't think that they're the same. And I so I agree with Apple on, uh, in that sense. You know, every so so often I'll, I don't know, like accidentally hit the music icon rather than the podcast icon. And I immediately am like, oh, yeah, I'm in the wrong place. Duh. Yeah. I meant to do something different. I don't know. They're just different things to me. Yeah. JPEG84 uh, points out Apple used to have podcasts in iTunes, to your point about iTunes being bloated. Oh, it was it, it made me insane. Kinds of crazy stuff in it. Uh, but even Apple when they changed away from iTunes, decided to keep podcasts separated from, from music. Maybe they'll eventually uh, start doing it the same way as everybody else. But I find it, it's fine. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it, but I find yeah. it confusing. I find it harder to keep track of things when the podcasts and the music have are one all more combined app. together. Yeah. I get that in theory, you're lit wanting to listen to something and you listen to podcasts and music in similar situations while you're jogging, while you're in the car, while you're doing yard work, you know, you got headphones in, you're listening to one or the other. And that's why you see Amazon even putting audiobooks in there along in, in, in the same line. Cause that also is something that you, you listen to in the same kinds of situations. Uh, I just wish that whatever they do on the platform side we would just all have one place to submit RSS feeds and yeah. it would just be, it's, it's RSS. It's meant for that. It's meant to be universal, right? It Why is, do we yeah. have to submit to every, okay, now I got to submit to YouTube music. Got to make sure that YouTube music has mine when the show is already on YouTube and was already on Google podcasts and is in Spotify and is an iHeartRadio. I just, I just think it's, annoying that every platform wants to reinvent the wheel or gatekeep what's in their system uh, when there is a perfectly reasonable and systematic way. And in fact, it's too bad that John uh, had technical problems today because I know he and Adam are big supporters of an open project to index podcast that is right there for everybody to use. Yeah, I think this largely, you know, Google has a marketing problem. Uh, Google also sunsets a uh, variety of properties with some regularity that people really yes. like. Yeah. So, so, you know, you, that's a twofer here. Um, but just in the greater sense of if, 
let's say Spotify. I'm not a Spotify user. I use Apple Music, but let's, you know, call them for the most part, pretty similar products. Uh, putting podcasts and music together under Spotify, not the end of the world. Does Spotify want to break out into two different, you know, platforms? No, of course not. But I think you can, you can, you know, it's, it's, it's largely optics here mm -hmm. of you want to listen to something. Well, we've got everything you might need. You want people talking, you want, you know, spoken word poetry, you want music, Taylor Swift, we've got it all. That would be fine. That wouldn't upset me. I just don't I like just, when things are put into a music category when they're not music. I just thought of something. Uh, YouTube has done something I think is pretty smart with YouTube TV and YouTube music, which is they're both available in YouTube. There's three different apps, right? There's YouTube music for music. There's YouTube TV for live TV. And then there's yeah. YouTube for traditional YouTube stuff. But you can watch YouTube TV stuff in YouTube. You can get YouTube music in YouTube. In fact, when you watch music hmm. videos in YouTube, the stats are merged with your YouTube music stuff. Why not do that with podcasts? Have YouTube podcasts, an app for people like us who just want to have podcasts. But if you want it, you could still add your podcast in YouTube music. You know, like why squish it over there? Why not do what you've already done uh, and know. and and make it make it easy so that you can do whatever you want? I mean, I'm a YouTube TV user. I, I'm well, price hikes aside over the years, I, I'm very, very happy with the service. I have never once used it inside of YouTube itself. Right. And you don't need, and, and YouTube's fine with that. They're like, that's only for somebody who really wants well, that. Well, yeah, because they're like, but, you know, just, yeah. you know, we'll give you a choice. Do what you want. Exactly. You know, as long as you stay exactly. with us somewhere. Hmm. All right. We need to, we need to chase, chase this heavy topic with some fun. What do we got? Yeah. Um, I'd say top of to you, but um, if nobody has <laughs> any hot sauce around, uh, let's go with Mattel. Mattel had quite a year at the box office, at least so far. Mm, sure did. Now, yeah. yeah, now uh, Mattel's on board. Uh, it's it's board game, rather, and it is on board uh, to change the game called Pictionary. Pictionary has a new version called Pictionary versus AI. So AI-enhanced refresh. If you haven't played Pictionary, you know, I, you know, Tom and I are playing. I'm trying to draw something. Tom's trying to guess what I'm drawing type thing. That's that's the uh, the basis of the game. That's a lot of fun. The new, yeah. yeah. The new spin is that humans are trying to now see if, if the AI is smart enough instead of other humans to understand what the humans are drawing. And the other humans who might be playing the game are also trying to predict if that AI will indeed understand the drawing. So a little bit of a departure from, from regular old Pictionary. Uh, the drawing by each participant sent to a smartphone, analyzed by Mattel's proprietary AI, which then tries to guess what you drew. Whoever else is playing along tries to guess whether or not the AI can in fact guess what you drew. Maybe you're really good at drawing, maybe you're not, but hey, we're talking about AI, right? So the 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 uh, the stakes are a little different. Pictionary versus AI releases on October second for twenty five dollars, and I am in line. That sounds fun to me. Yeah, I I actually really like this idea. Uh, first of all, it took me a minute to be like, well, why wouldn't you just draw really bad so the AI can't recognize? And then I realized the rule was no, you want the AI to guess your drawing. It's other people are trying to figure out whether it will or not. Uh, where, yeah. where it's quality gets in. Uh, and for those I know who have questions, this is a model created for Mattel. So it is proprietary to Mattel, uh, like Sarah said, but it's using Google's technology. It was trained on actual drawings. And when you scan your drawing, it is not stored at Mattel. So you're, you're, not, you're not training it any further. You're just playing the game uh, using something specifically created to recognize Pictionary drawings. Uh, and, and it doesn't have to be the best because that's kind of the fun of like, well, what is it good at and what isn't it? Oh, totally. I was trying to think of what it, what does this remind me of uh, before uh, the show started? I was trying to think of what's that game where you... S you say something that isn't true, and then everyone tries to guess of like, oh, is it really not true? Balderdash, also a fun game, a uh, good party game. This is not that, but there's a little of the person drawing wants the AI to get it or intentionally doesn't, you know, for mm -hmm. whatever reason, and hilarity ensues. 
hopefully. Yeah. In the video, uh, there is one of broccoli that really looks like a tree and the I guess tree. And I was like, you know what? I probably would have too if I was the uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. so. You know, sometimes the robots are, you know, it looked yeah. like a tree. I think what? like them sometimes. What are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, well, folks, you may recall from yesterday's show that I mentioned it's free preview week. Uh, if you're not a patron, we're letting you get all the fun stuff that the patrons get uh, in your regular feed. So you are getting the full extended show just so you can see what it's like. Stick around for Good Day Internet. We're going to discuss how long should we expect companies to support software updates on phones? We forever. always want it to be longer, but is it forever? Stick around and find out. Maybe it is. <laughs> I mean, my answer is forever, but reality. Yeah, we'll talk about it in a minute. Just a reminder, though, you can catch our show. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we'll be back doing it again tomorrow with Scott Johnson joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I enjoyed this program. Well, I, I don't did know about too. you. Yeah, you did? Yeah. Can you too. imagine if I was like, eh, three out of ten? <laughs> no, or, I, or, I thought it was even, great. Even more like five. Like, it was all right. You know. Yeah, like if I was like, you know, out of 10, what would you give this? And, you know, if if I was proud of anything and someone said, uh, it's called a five, I'd be like, yeah. oh, dear. It's all I right. Failed. I mean, I not, the, not the best, yeah. not the worst. 50 percent. Yeah. Not good. Um, but then, you know, 75 percent, 7.5 would be a C. I don't like that either. It's average. That seems wrong that 75 percent is a C. I know. It's been a while since... I mean, gosh, when I was in school, if I got a C, I was not going to have a good day. C's were, C's were a bad situation. Mm -hmm. They were rough C's. They were. They were rough C's. I mean, not that long. I actually didn't, didn't, uh, I didn't take a B very well. Well, no. Anything that, listen, mm -hmm. A plus is A plus. A, A minus, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my own household. Yeah. Then you get into B's and you go like, hmm, so what was the problem? <laughs> you know, yeah. My parents yes. were real nice about That's it. That's the but it same was like, way. My parents were like, yeah. what happened? Yeah. All right, you got yeah. a B. If you yeah, got a C, it was like, okay, we need to do something about this. Right. Yeah. It's like you're passing and mm -hmm. we want you to be exemplary. Um, I don't actually think I ever got a C until I got into college and then I didn't care. I'm like, I just we didn't need have, this diploma. We didn't have D's. In your in high school? elementary school. We in had them in junior school. high and high school, but we didn't have them in elementary. Oh, yeah. Elementary, I don't remember even getting we graded. Had, uh, when I was like first, second, and I think third, we had I's because they didn't want to give kids F's. That was oh, that, that was demo demoralizing. What's the because I? It, insufficient? I was insufficient, incomplete. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, you didn't want to get an I. And then they went back to F when I was like, I don't know, fourth, fifth grade. somewhere. Interesting. In <laughs> Enough parents were like, no, what? we need that red F. I think I think it was like, it was the 70s and everybody was all like touchy feely, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we don't want to give kids an F. Then the 80s came out and everybody got all hard nose again. They're like, yeah, toughen up kids. <laughs> you can take an F, it's I, fine. I yeah. actually never understood the reason why there was a D. Versus, because once my belief was once below a C, you're like, it was inadequate. You had to, you know, like, why make a distinction between what failure does and... D stand for? Now D that I'm was thinking. below average. Well, I know, C, but what C is was the, average? So D was the... like, you didn't fail, but you you were below average. But it's like A B C D. What does D mean? Oh, the, I, I think it was just the, A, B, C, D, like in order, right? Yeah. They don't stand for anything. Yeah. I think well, fail it, should be E. Because fail should be E. They were like, yeah, but it's fail. Let's call it F. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. You never got an E grade. What was yeah. that about? Yeah. Excellent, I would say. Give me an E. Should be. Um, yeah. There were a couple. Um, I, I, I know colleges are, uh, they vary a lot um, in how they grade or don't grade stuff, but... There were a couple, these were always electives that I had to take in college, you know, that I didn't care about that much. 
and and Roger knows this because we went to the same college, uh, you could you couldn't do it like last day of class in a semester, but up until like I think it was like the, the first like the... 30 percent or maybe even like the middle the of a class, weeks. you could kind of go like, you know what, this isn't going to go well. So instead of getting a grade, I'm going to go with pass fail. So passing is like you you passed um, and you got a fewer, I don't know, like merits as a result. But you at least didn't yeah. get a bad grade. I'm trying to remember. You passed. You got pass fail. You could get the credits, but you didn't. it didn't help or hurt your GPA. It, like, it didn't go. Yeah, that's anything. what it was. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly what it was. It was basically it just you floated through the class. Your GPA mm -hmm. didn't get bumped up by the pass, but it also didn't get. Docked. And I think at the University of Illinois, there was a limit on how many classes you could do pass fail. Yeah, you, you, you know. couldn't just do that for everything. Right. I think I I don't remember what class I did that with. And I mean, I I mean, I, it, I laid awake at night, you know, should I do? Is it going to make me seem like I didn't try? You know, like this class is not working for me. I don't remember what class it was. was it may uh, have been one of the like the legal media classes that sometimes were oh, just uh, uh, law, not fun. Law and, what was that? Law and media. Uh, there was a law and media. Yeah. Class, yeah. It was in that one building where nothing else ever was. I'm trying to think was. if I ever did pass fail. I might have done a kinesiology class pass fail mm. because I wanted I, the credits. But I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to like get a B in kinesiology coaching of softball strategies and bring down my GPA. So I just, <laughs> yeah. I, I ended up just dropping classes because what's the point if I'm not getting, oh, I would do that also. Yeah. I was like, I hate this. These were, I should have done that. I, this with only, that this only happened. I, I, I think it only happened once, maybe twice. And it, it was a class I had to take mm -hmm. that I didn't want. I didn't want to be yeah. there in the first place, but it was part of my major and I had to do it. And I think the law class was one of them. Uh, law classes, I actually like, I would probably like very much now, but you know, I was 19 years old. Yeah. Um, something else. There was something else I didn't like. I don't know. Everything don't know. else college, in my major was actually pretty fun. A, college generally was a better experience than high school. I was just a, I was a B student in high school. And uh, I was definitely an A student in college because I could pick the classes I wanted. And I could like, oh, yeah. I want this teacher and I want it this time of day. You felt, yeah, you felt like it was less of just kind of going through the motions. I have to take, I have to take uh -huh. the calculus or yeah. I have to take this. Or... You know, in, I, I, and I, I mean, this is not like me bragging. Or I, I was just an A student until college. Not because things weren't difficult or I didn't have to try. Um, I just, it, it mattered more to me. And then once I got to college, I was like, but I get a degree no matter what, <laughs> unless I really <laughs> I... screw up. And no one cares what I graduate, like like what GPA I had, except like in very specific, you know, workplace uh, situations that I might be in in the future. So I just kind of was like, eh, I'll just graduate. I had a strong aversion to studying in high school. Like I would study for like the test like the day of. Like you know the, the the like the two break periods you have before like third period, that'd be like cramming through the book. Well, I mean, I I sometimes joke about this to people about what we all do for a living is that I say you wake up in the morning and you're cramming for a test. That's what you're doing, you know. Like, I mean, of course, there's you know. It, Everything that we talked about on today's show, there's context, there are, you know, past stories that, you know, play into how we feel yeah. about the story going forward, all of that. But you wake up and you cram, you know, yeah. I can't just like not cram or else I'll sit here and have no idea what I'm talking about. And, I'll, you know, it'll be bad. And that's you have to read the story. And not only do you have to read the story, you have to like understand it. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. That's it's the like cramming you, part. You, you want to read that out loud. Like how, however it is that you get to that place, you do that. Like and with the with the foldable laptops, I had to go open the Lenovo, the HP Spectre, and the Asus reviews from The Verge to re, re, like remind myself what were those again? Because I want to have that in my mind, or right. else I'm going to say something that's not right about them. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. And you know, you could say, well. You, you could approach the show completely differently and every story you knew about a week ago type thing. It's like, well, sure, we could 
That'd totally do that. <laughs> but but this is a it's a live show and it's a test cramming thing. And I'm with you, Roger. I did a lot of last minute cramming because I'm like, this is just it's best if it's all in my head right at the last moment, because then I'll know it all for the test. Hey, Roger, uh, Joe wants the title. If you could give it to him in the, yes. in the chat. Um, and we should talk about the uh, the phones, oh, yeah. too. Um, tell, tell us about the, the Google Pixel announcement. I will. Uh, Google's Pixel phone announcement is expected to happen at an event on October 4th. I mean, it's pretty much a sure thing with all the leaks. Part of the way that we know this is because of the leaks ahead of the announcement. One of those leaks is that the Pixel phones will get seven years of updates, which is longer even than Apple supports its phones, and puts the Pixel right there with Fairphone at the top of the software update charts. So... Uh, let's go around the horn here and talk about uh, how many years of updates do we need? Is seven years sufficient? Should it be more? Is that excessive? Do we need 10 years? Do we need five? I don't know, Tom, what do you think? Well, okay, as a consumer, I want it to be as long as possible because I want sure. the luxury to decide when I get rid of my phone, not feel like I have to get rid of my phone because it's out of support, right? Especially when security updates. So up to up till now, Google was three years of feature updates, five years of security updates. Uh, Apple has been the best at this at, at pretty much keeping it six to seven years. So seven years guaranteed is, is longer than Apple usually goes, but Apple doesn't give you a guarantee it just has a, a a practice that it usually follows. Yeah. And Apple has some flexibility to do this that Google now has because of Google doing the SOCs and all of that. But uh, if, if you're Apple, you can just continue to support it until the software has outstripped the capabilities of the hardware. You can say like, you know what? We just can't put features on this phone. It's too old. And I feel like that's reasonable because... Yes, some people do keep their phone for 10 years, but most people don't. Most people get to a point where they realize like this is just slow. I want I want a more capable phone. Mm -hmm. And I feel like somewhere past 5 but not too far past 5 is is the reasonable the reasonable support window when you consider that if all phone makers were required by law to support phones for 10 to 15 years, it would raise the prices of phones for everybody because they'd have to be paying developers to develop for phones that very few people had. It would be costly. So there has to be yeah. a point that's reasonably when you go like, yeah, it's just not worth it for them to keep developing for this phone anymore. Just like it's, you know, it's your, your washer and dryer from the fifties. You're not going to get a warranty on it you know, from, from the place you bought it. It's too old. There's got to be a limit. And I, I feel like that limit can keep getting longer as as hardware becomes more commoditized and as software, mm -hmm. you know, stops stops leaps and bounds as, as this this product category becomes more mature. But I, yeah, I feel like right now it's probably five to seven. I think seven's pretty, pretty I, generous. I think I do, too. I I am. Um... I'm trying to think of, I mean, we were talking about like a washer and dryer. It's like, I mean, these people had washer and dryers for 30 years, but, uh, but yeah, as far as a mobile device is concerned and I'm trying to think of the longest that I went, you know, and we, you know, we work in tech and we, we, we cover this stuff. So I'm not, I don't even really consider myself a normal person, uh, when it comes to upgrading tech, uh, because sometimes I, I do it for the purposes of work, but yeah. Um, you know, I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, I I mentioned last week, I think. I'm not upgrading to the 15 because there's nothing wrong with my 13. I got my 13 right before the 14 was announced. And I knew I knew what I was doing, and I was like, you know, I just need a new phone. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get all messed up in the you know the the rat race. I need the phone that I need. Um, and I like it. And if I have this phone for another five years. Because, you know, it's two years old at this point. I'm happy. Um, if it, yeah, if if in five years from now, there's some big reason that uh, it will no longer work uh, the way everyone else's phone works, I don't think I'd be mad about it. I would think that that's a pretty long time from now. I mean, I'm going to drop it in a toilet way before then anyway, because that's just how life works. So, <laughs> yeah, that would just be my yeah, own I, fault. Roger, what about you? Uh, 
I think the minimum should be five, and I do like seven, especially if you purchase a flagship or near flagship model where they're pretty they're 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 they're, they're pretty speedy, you know, hardware to begin with. So you should at least expect to use it for six years. Even if you don't use it directly, you, you give it to like a family member. Yeah, it should have a, a life of six yeah. years, whether it's you or or someone else and on the used market. Yeah. The only time I the only time I've I actually had to update was a if apps just feel sl- uh, felt slow on it or b for example when I moved away from the Nexus up to a Samsung uh, is because I wanted the the on the on device encryption where it encrypts all the data but it was so slow on the Nexus three like it just took forever to to do and so it's like well I better upgrade because this is this is a security feature that isn't working well enough. Uh, to 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 seriously use the phone because I would I I was seriously considering turning it off, uh, just to to get things working normally and, you know when you're 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 weighing the options between security and and convenience, uh, because your device is too slow that's usually a telltale sign, you need to upgrade. I think too you have to remember with phones that we are still in smartphones anyway, in the in the early days. And product cycles are much different in early days than they are later. Uh, you could even go back to, you know, to the late 1800s and electricity, you know, there were there were varying ways of delivering electricity. And and so you might get a device that worked well with one way, and then it turns out they would change electricity to a different way. Well, we don't think about that anymore. We don't think about like, well, should I get the AC or the DC or, you know, uh, uh, is my home electricity going to be compatible? Because we quickly got out of that in the 1800s and haven't thought about it since. I feel like with phone service, we're kind of there with 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, where we're, we're still evolving. At some point, internet connectivity over the wireless will just be stable. It'll just be standard. I don't know when that'll happen, but at some point that'll happen. Hmm. Uh, and and you won't have to keep upgrading a phone to use the the current standard. We won't have controversies when you know the UK announces an end date for 3G support because uh, some people are still using it. And I think that's why uh, when Nick with the C says, I replace my desktop every eight to 10 years, why should I allow a phone to be different? Uh, it's not that you allow uh, a phone to be different. It's it's that it is different. And it, it isn't as mature as the laptop yet. You can replace a laptop every eight to 10 years now because it's not advancing as fast as phones well, are. Phones have a lot of mm-hmm. things that we're still working through and coming up with advancements on. I mean, and, we're just, you know, I'll, look look at our foldable conversation. Two years ago, people would have been like, what are you guys talking about? Well, I mean, you know, things, things, they happen. And and they've hit a plateau in terms of the vast majority of apps you would need to have working, like a web browser, some office apps or whatever. You can get by with a, a, a mid-range or low-power device and use that for a long time because if all you're doing is sending email, if all you're doing is checking yeah. up on, you know, the, there's a plateau of use where, you know, sure, you could get something faster, but that's if, hey, I'm a content creator or I'm a big gamer or I'm doing something very specialized. Yeah, you're going to need more, more you know, horsepower. But, you know, I, I'm actually fine with my phone as long as they keep the updates, software updates and security updates on it. I'm, you know, I'll keep it as long as it keeps working. Well, but at, at some point you're going to hit another feature like you did with encryption, right? Where you're like, ooh, this phone doesn't support that feature. And that that's going to, the time between that is going to get longer as phone technology yeah. matures, but that kind of stuff still is going to happen. I used to replace my computer every like 18 months back in the nineties, wow. you know, because there would always be like, oh, wow, I'm on a 486 DX and and they're already selling Pentium 120s. Like I, I, I'm falling behind. This is so slow. It can't run all the software that that the newest software out there. I need to I need to upgrade. And then I remember when that slowly became two years, and then it became three years, and then then it became. I don't really think about it. I just I replace a laptop mm-hmm. when it's you know no longer working well anymore. Like you're talking about wanting to do with your phone, uh, and that that. Uh, time is stretching out as that product category matures. And I feel like we should continue to put pressure on manufacturers to extend the support 
but I don't, I don't know if it's reasonable to expect, you know, 20 year support from a telephone or a smartphone. Yeah. Maybe from a telephone, uh, oh, yeah. from a rotary phone, absolutely, but not from a smartphone. Add a, add a 20-year-old touch. Gosh, that phone. reminds it me worked. of a dream I had last Those night things where somebody were, had no a rotary phone. Those and things were like, built wow, to last. Cool. Yeah. I don't you know, know what? I figured, uh, I figured, speaking I of rotary phones, smart. never, to my knowledge, at least as long as I was ever using a phone, we never had one of the circle phones. You know where you do the the, the rotary, yeah, the yeah. rotary. Yeah. Well, but rotary phones, they you still call it a rotary phone, don't you? When it has the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a block. No, that's no. push button. That's touchdown. That's touchdown. Oh, okay, all right. So I never actually had a rotary phone that I can think of, but I always thought like they were cooler when actually, I was actually. Hold on, hold on. I, I there is an exception. If you there were some phones that had the one, two, three, four, five buttons. But when you pushed them, they went, t -t 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 -t. so they were sending the rotary signal. So if you had one of those, Ooh. you technically had a rotary. No, you were sending it, the rotary it was. Signal. No. If you okay, could do, if you could do, if you could do the phone yeah. menu with your phone, that like you know, press mm -hmm, one for mm -hmm. this, press two, you had to touch right, 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 right. Oh, and that's yeah, what pushed, that was, that that's was a limitation. Had, I just always thought those were because it was. You Thank know, you, Fred. Pole styling is what that was called. Pole styling, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just always think of, you know, we always had a phone hanging on the wall in the kitchen. I don't know why, like but it was just a wall It's thing. a 20-foot cord. So and then there was a phone the in my parents' bedroom that was, you know, tabletop. Um, but neither of them were the actual rotary phone. And so when I would – but there were a lot of people who had them. You know, you go over to someone else's house and you're like, wow, it's like way harder. You never had like thought they were <laughs> the cooler sister, phone somehow. You you never got your own phone like pre cell phone. You never had your own phone. I had my own phone before cell phones. Yeah, I did. I mean, when I lived all alone, my friends I were... did. Not not when I lived with my parents, I never did. I mean, like my, when you were living my parents out. got me my own phone line. I think after too many late night calls from Sarah's friends. Um, no and they were just chance. Like we've had it. We've had it with we, you. Get your own phone. The the only big advance in our household when I was growing up is we got a cordless phone, so you oh, could yeah. take it into your room. But that was that was as good as we ever got. We we only yeah. ever had one line. Most of my childhood, it was mounted to the wall. It was a rotary phone, yep. beige rotary phone mounted yep. to the yes. wall. Yes, always and the then, beige phone in the yeah. kitchen. Uh -huh. And that was it. That was the only line we had. And then, well, and you had when, and you, the cord, you know, I mean, you could, you could, we had a pretty go out cord. of the kitchen go and around room. the corner. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Type thing. But uh, I think we went from that to a pulse phone once, once AT&T got broken up that sat on the, on the little, you know, a little, we had a little phone stand thing there and then we went from that to cordless and the cordless was like you know you could walk into the backyard and talk it's crazy uh, it's so weird that i didn't get a cordless phone until after i got a cell phone like up until that time my phone like, oh my gosh i didn't get a cell phone until i started working at zdtv in 1999 i, I only had one I, because which is around when i got it yeah yeah i i had one in college but my dad was you know I had left home and he was always worried something terrible. He was like, she just needs to be able to get a hold of me yep, if yep. she's in an emergency. So mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that was my first Motorola um, way back in the day. But uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> back in the, the you know, uh, cordless phone days, you know, where some people had them, but a lot of people didn't. I remember like, I don't know, th these are also the days where, you have to sit around and wait for someone to call you at home, you know, if you're expecting oh, to hear from I hated them. that. Didn't you hate that? Yeah. And like, like I remember Waiting like the putting the phone on the counter and I'm like, I have to take a shower, but like, okay. You know, and the phone rings, you know, I'm like, hi, I'm taking a shower, but it like still works. And they're like, can you just call me back? Like, <laughs> it wasn't that important, but I'm like, but it works. <laughs> like, no, no. All That's these all little scenarios. Don't you understand? Of all yeah, the like, things, <laughs> free cell phone that was annoying was waiting by the phone. Like, oh, he's going to call me back. Like, what's up? It's interesting. Like, waiting, mm -hmm. waiting by the phone still means something, but it means something it different. 
right? Because waiting, waiting by the by phone, the phone just then, means that, like, yeah, like, I have no option. Ghosted. I'm waiting for you to call. So I have to be by yeah. the phone because the phone doesn't move. Now it means I am so obsessed. I am mentally waiting. I am holding my cell yes. phone in my hand waiting for you to call yeah. wherever I am. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I know. And it. I mean, <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, I think, and we, and nobody complained about it, but it's like, we didn't know what to complain about because the technology wasn't there. Yeah. There was no way for me to, how would my mom tell me that someone called me before I got back home? Yeah. How would she... She couldn't you, she, oh, carry she your call pigeon. the or? movie theater where you were and right. tell them to relay a message to you or something. Yeah, oh, my dad I mean, did that. You know, to only me if it, in the most dire of emergencies would something like that happen. But yeah, hmm. yeah, I think I think that happened to me maybe once where they my parents knew I was at a restaurant in Greenville. I don't know what they needed to tell me. It wasn't that much of an emergency. Like I don't remember anything traumatic. But uh -huh. somebody was like, came over and was like, hey, your mom just called and said whatever it was. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. But yeah, that was the closest you ever get. I remember I, mean, I had this teacher. This is in. Uh, she probably want me to pick up something at the store on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> just let's get a hold of him before he drives home. Yeah. I remember uh, in uh, junior high, uh, you know, like seventh, eighth grade, um, I, I, I was sort of a difficult person in general uh, at that age. But I also had a teacher that I didn't get along with. And I remember, like, there was a payphone at the school. Like, if you needed to call your parents or... I mean, unless it was, again, an emergency where you would go to the principal's office, use the payphone. One payphone. And mm -hmm. sometimes there was a line, like, you know, and you need a quarter and the whole thing. Um, and I think I always had like a couple quarters, you know, my parents would say, if you really need to get a hold of us, you know, you can use a pay phone. I remember, oh, yeah. like, I remember always putting a quarter, a quarter in and calling my mom and being yeah. like, Mr. So-and-so, me to me, me, you know, and she's like at work, <laughs> like, well, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Bye. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Take the bus home. <laughs> very different, very different than how life is today. I, even when I was doing search and rescue training in 2007, they still recommended putting a quarter in your emergency backpack mm -hmm. so that you, if you needed to make a phone call, you know, in case your cell phone was out of range, you but could find only, the payphone. If only the payphones phone. were things to be found these days. I do they see them every exist, once in a while. And it's yeah. like, oh, oh my God. I, I see the want, husks, I use but it. I don't, I see the little things where they were mounted but i don't actually see the phones i see them often and they're obviously like so dilapidated that there's no way that google just, google has a google map of removed. pay phones and it's very sparse <laughs> i remember where, using where? them i don't know I how used copper to, used to wipe either. them off before i used them where did I see a payphone recently where I was like, gosh, that payphone's in good shape. I bet it even works. Oh, okay. So WikiHow says, uh, look at government locations, post offices, public libraries, hospitals, high schools, and workforce training centers. <sighs> Maybe it's the hospital. Maybe that's where I've seen a payphone recently. Although, I mean, there's a person working at, around every corner that could just you could use their phone. I don't know. By 2016, the number of payphones in California had dropped from 100,000 to 27,000. <laughs> still 27,000. That's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, seven years ago, think. though. So I imagine, yeah. imagine it's dropped even farther I think, since then. I think probably so. Oh, and wow. I don't even know what I would... You know, it's, I, it is few and far between. There are certain numbers I have committed to memory, certain family members. But I mean, any of my friends... I can't, I mean, under, under pressure would not be able to come up with, I might know the area code. Well, I know the area code for most people. Um, but even then, no, I don't know anyone's number anymore. Payphone-project.com keeps track of payphones across See? the United States. Perfect. Wow. There's a yes. lot at like companies. There's one at Western Nails, one at Hamburger Hamlet. Hamburger Hamlet. Hmm. Hamburger Hamlet. Why does that sound familiar to me? Because uh, it's a delicious I've been hamburger there. store. I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, there's one in Sherman Oaks. Hamburger Hamlet. Oh, I've driven I, I just, by it. That's why. 
I, I just like the, I like the name. Yeah, I looked at a house there in Hamburger Hamlet. <laughs> in inside the Hamlet. Yeah, I wanted to live in the in the okay. Hamburger Hamlet, but you know what? The taxes were a little a little high. Property taxes in Hamburger. Um, we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, again, uh, thanks to everybody who supports the show on Patreon. Welcome free previewers. I hope you're enjoying the free preview. Uh, I want to thank, uh, the folks interacting, faking nose grab, like, in uh, the, the, uh, the experiment week post go, going deep there. Uh, Grover T. Muldoon putting a lot of likes on stuff. Good to see you enjoying stuff over there, Grover. Uh, thank you to everybody who supports the show directly at patreon.com slash DTNS. Also, thanks to everyone who supports the show on Twitch, making our video possible. We got bits from Dan3413. Wild West Dan's back for the seventh month. Good to see you, Wild West Dan. Windmill Steve for the 41st month. C Spawn with 200 bits. Zoe with bits. Brian with bits, Chaz Basden for the 41st month, Rabbit 41 with some bits. Good to see everybody. Tomorrow is the Meta Connect conference. Where Ooh, we're going to get some out. chat bots. Yeah, maybe. we're going to get those personas that they were talking about. Until then. I hope there's just like a really rude one. <laughs> There is. There's there's one apparently based on Bender from Futurama. Oh, I see. Yeah. Until Rude. tomorrow, everyone. <laughs> Good day. Have a Anna. shiny metal day. Do. Or don't, jerk. I don't care.